Hey guys, this is Arm Productions, aka Nana473, and this is Dreamcatcher. I'm a little nervous. Um, this is the game I made. Uh, it was supposed to be a Nano Renault 2016 entry, but I only like uploaded it like in August, <laughs> so it it was a late one. But um, I'm very nervous because I usually don't play my own games on my channel. Um, Except that really crappy one, <laughs> Mira Yume, that I made ages ago. Um, because I'm usually very bad at taking them seriously. Um, because all of the games I've made so far have, uh, have released have been very dark and serious games. This is too. Um, but also, it is one of the games I am most proud of. I l love how it turned out, even though it's not the best game in the world. I love how it turned out, and I'm very proud of it. And I want to share it with you guys. So, um, it's a mystery... A mystery, psychological, slight horror, slight point and click uh, game. And with four endings. And, um, yeah. I'm looking forward to showing you. I'm gonna get what I consider the true ending, though it doesn't say it's the true ending. So it's like what I consider the true ending. And it's linked to the first game I made uh, or released called Choice, uh, if anyone. So you might recognize a couple of things uh, if you've played that game. And I'm gonna link it in the description if you wanna try the other endings. And um, I hope you enjoy. I am a little scared. I'm also gonna take this cat on my lap and put her down. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, BB. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, BB. Come here. Too much hair. <laughs> She's in that period of time where it's just, just hair. Just shit hair everywhere. Alright. Let's uh, go. Still a little scared. Um, the game, I made the game, um, now I can be a little like, it's a little like, uh, create a commentary, <laughs> nah, not really, but, uh, I made the game, um, myself, mostly, but I had help from a very talented artist, actually two very talented artists, uh, one who made uh, the sprite art, and, well, and, um, a couple of the CGs and another artist who made a couple of CGs too and then there's a logo artist who made the logo for me so I've been so blessed this year where free of charge I've just gotten these very talented people to work with me the GUI the general user interface this 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 thing I made that myself it's a, it's a little no cat I'm recording <laughs> it's a little um maybe it's not the best but it's it's what it is, and for an amateur, I'm very proud of it. Of, I'm proud of it, honestly. So let's just go. Oh my god, cat. Okay, so I'm gonna try to be as serious as possible when it comes to this game, so I'm and get into the voice acting and such. Mom? I know you're not always so super strong and happy. But can I ask you one question? I know you become sad when I talk to you. That's what I've been told. But, just this one question. Would you be happier if I was gone? I'm here again. It's strange, how even though I don't know where else I would be, or where I could go besides this place, it's still a surprise to find myself here. Strange is a good word for this place, actually. I never know what I do before I'm summoned, and I don't know where I go when my job is done. It's all very unclear, and to be honest, I hate it to bits. It's like never actually having breaks. A dead-end day job with no breaks at all. This strange place has a sick sense of humor. Despite all of this, I breathe in the dream world, as I creatively called it, sin. It's fresh and salty and reminds me of the ocean. Not that I've actually been to the ocean, not that I can remember. Bar said that I once was human, but that it matters little. 
I like the smell and the breeze here. The ocean is great. I like it at least, even if I've never seen it before. We have arrived, DC 0086. DC 0086, that's what they call me. Such a monotone, stupid name. It feels cold and distant, like this is all some sort of big business. Maybe it is, I wouldn't know. DC 0086. Yes, that's what you call me. What can I do for you, boss? My boss. A voice with no face or anything that can show me that this is not all in my head. Hell, I don't even know the gender of the voice. It's weird, but I've decided that it's a male, and it's actually starting to sound like one. I'll never get used to this place. I don't even know how long I've been here. Your next mission. Yes, yes, I got it. Let's get this over with. Of course it's another mission. What else? I do nothing but work here. You seem disappointed. Honestly, I'm so sick of these missions. I don't mind helping others, but if I need to listen to one more rich tween whose fairy boy band split up, I might actually break something. You're not real, so touching something from the human realm will prove to be difficult. Jesus, you never catch a joke, do you? I do not catch anything. That is very much your job. But did you not give yourself that little nickname for, the re for that reason? It's not silly. I never said it was. I know, but I feel like I can read everyone's thoughts in this world. This is no world, DC 0086. This place is nothing. Merely a place for your spirit to reside before traveling into the minds of others. I know, okay? You've told me a thousand times before. You're wasting my time. You're not learning the way you should. What? You're not learning the way you should. Yeah, I heard you the first time. I just didn't get it. What am I supposed to be learning? You wish for harder tasks, I hear. Yes, that would be splendid, thank you. And so be it. But do be cautious. These assignments are no child's play. Well, I'm not a child. Oh, you are very much a child, DC 0086. What's that supposed to mean? Hey, what does that mean? Hey! Oh, just great. You always bail before saying something important. Before telling me something about myself. I can feel the world pulling on me suddenly. It does that when it wants me to move on. I can never stay here too long. I get it, I get it. With a swift movement, I reach for the dream that boss left for me. It's stronger than the others I've handled, so I need to concentrate more than normally. I close my eyes, willing my dream catcher to take in the dream, and a light starts to emit from it when I succeed. <clears throat> Excuse me. I slowly breathe, I slowly and steadily, I breathe slowly and steadily as I chant the words with precision. I am nothing but a breeze wanting entrance. I am nothing that will fuel your despair. I only wish peace and calm. And that is why I find myself in the dream that is yours. I beg you humbly, grant me entrance. It's working. I hold my breath as I pass through the gate. But before I find myself in the dream, something weird happens. It's morning. I'm tired, though. It's her. You have to get up now. Yes. And hurry, I don't want Claire to be late for school. Yes. So get to it. Yes. Pfft, ridiculous. Yes. I am quite ridiculous. What was that? I'm in her dream now. As I get used to the surroundings, I try to take everything in. I'm in a snowy forest and not a sound can be heard. No animals are in sight, and I'm very much alone in this incredibly quiet forest. The trees look tired and dead, the sky is grey and gives off a sense of foreboding. It is awfully cold. It's just from the beginning very clear that... And the first choice of the game... This person is depressed. It's obvious that whosoever mind this is, they're not happy. Actually, this feels very much like depression. I don't like being in depressed people's dreams. They always come up with the scariest shit. As I walk through the forest, I very soon find out that I'm not entirely alone. Something else is here. But it's not a nice presence or anything like that. Actually, it sends a chill down my spine. 
Something here is trying to drag the person down. I better get to work if boss is gonna think I'm capable of this. Let's look through this one's memory. I need a quick look first. I hold on to my dream catcher, willing my mind to search the place for something of use. After a couple of seconds, I find something. A name. Chloe. Her name is Chloe. That's a good start, but let's dig a little deeper. And now we are at the point and click element. It's not that, it's not that amazing, I'll be honest. But it's like you can click here these different memories. And I actually know, because I made the game, um, I know the, um, the order that I'd like people to pick the memories in for it to make most sense. Oh, well, not actually, it's just the order I like doing. <laughs> huh, there's a really strong memory here. But not just strong, it's almost too powerful and gives off a warm, tingling sensation in my stomach. I try to remain professional and reach for it. As soon as I touch the memory, I can feel it's pulling me in. I blink a couple of times, but the memory is still blurred. For some reason, this person's mind is very unclear. What do you think about this? What do you think about this one? Who? I'm not sure I like it. Maybe I'm just being silly. What do you think, Clum? I don't know, Matthew. Maybe you're just too hooked on the last book you read. It seems like I'm inside her body, watching her memories. And that guy is named Matthew. Maybe you're right. He smiled. Seems like Clum's heart is acting up. Which means mine is too. I'm often right. <laughs> hey, if you laugh like that, it seems like you're making fun of me. I'm not making fun of you. Only teasing a little. Jeez. The sky is blue, the breeze is fresh but warm. It's a beautiful summer day. I get the feeling the feeling of happiness in the air is almost overflowing. Just tell me when you're done with the newest chapter. I wanna know what you think. I'm reading as fast as I can. Well hurry! The memory ends here. Too bad. I liked it here. And I'm back. The call of the snow is almost too much to bear after staying in the summer sun for a little. So as I can collect, close feelings towards Matthew is... She's in love with him. I could feel her feelings clearly. No mistaking those feelings. She's head over heels with that guy. How nostalgic. I wonder if I've had this feeling before. Okay, that was one memory. I got a little information, but should I keep going? I'm gonna keep going. I should keep going. Yeah, yeah, this one. This memory is very dull and dark. It's also a little weak. Well, let's try it. There's a lot of thoughts in here. If I concentrate, I should be able to. Useless. I'm useless. I only cause all these problems. I'm nothing but a waste of waste. A waste of air, a waste of space. I should just disappear. Nothing matters. I don't matter. I don't care. I want to disappear. Let me disappear. Get me out of this hell. Somebody help me. This is too much. I'm leaving. As I find myself back in Chloe's dream, I need a couple of seconds to breathe and calm myself down. She was all alone with those negative thoughts. That can't be healthy. Judging from these thoughts, I think... She was blaming herself because of something. She was... Uh, come on. She was blaming herself for some reason. I guess it's my job to find out why. Should I keep going? I should keep going. Right, this one. This memory is very tender. Let's go. I swear, you two always order way too much. Oh god. You need to live a little, Hannah. Well, I gain weight when I eat sweets all day. Not that not everyone can be lucky like you, Natalie. Jeez, just eat this blueberry muffin. It's good, right, Chloe? Blueberry muffins are the best. Not you too, Chloe. What can I say? This is the best blueberry muffin I've ever had. There's even white chocolate in it. Delicious. Alright, give me that muffin. What? But it's mine. Give it to me. No, oh, my muffin. <laughs> They're bickering back and forth. Seems like this is routine for them. 
A warm atmosphere fills the air as the girls continue to talk about nothing and everything. Oh, by the way, you hung out with Matthew last Sunday, didn't you, Plo? She did what? Oh yeah, I guess I did. And you haven't told us the details yet? Easy now, Natalie. No, 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 that's not good enough. Spill it, sister. Well, we just kind of bumped into each other. No biggie. No biggie, my ass! What did he say? Uh, stuff about writing and reading and stuff. Aw, oh, he takes interest in your hobbies. That's just too cute. Uh-huh, I'm telling you, you have to date him. He's cute enough to eat. Natalie, that's a little... What? I think everyone at school would tap that. Natalie! I can't help but smile as the memory in. A little bit like the memory in the park. I don't really want to leave. He has wonderful friends. But I have to go. So far, so good. As far as I can see. She likes her friends a lot. It's obvious that she likes her friends a lot. Makes me kind of happy. Should I keep going? You should definitely keep going. And we take this one down here. Here's a memory. It's calm, not overly happy, but not sad either. It's content. Well, let's try it. It's just Chloe sitting in her office chair. What's she doing? Oh, she's writing. It seems like time passes rather fast when you write like this. I don't mind that. It's rather common to just write about nothing in particular. I like it a lot, actually. I'm wondering whether so or not someone will read this one day. It's a funny thought. Somebody reading what I wrote. I think I'd like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. It ends here. And I'm back. As far as I can detect, Chloe wanted to share her stories with the world. She wanted others to see her stories. She wanted them to be known for others to see what she felt. Should I keep going? Definitely should. And the last one. This one is dark. And weak too. It's also recent. I take a deep breath, fearing what I might see. I can hear it. I can hear my heartbeat. It sounds fine, but I know it's slowing down. My entire body if I, is shaking. If I lift my hand slightly, I can look at it. Shaking, out of my control. I feel fine. Actually, I feel good. No pain, no reality, no worries. I feel almost happy, but mostly tired. So very tired. I close my eyes, and then all I have to do is wait. No. No, this can't be right. She's not dead. She can't be dead. I'm in her dream. She has to be alive. Why? Why would she leave those who loved her so much? I take a deep breath, trying to compose myself. I'm on a job. I need to stay professional. Alright. I've read though all there is to read. I should try looking for Chloe now. I sign about what's happening in her head right now sign that she's alive. I breathe slowly as, and as, as I walk through the forest, trying to find something that tells me where Chloe is. Chloe? Chloe, are you there? It's okay to show yourself. I'm not going to hurt you. Chloe! She must be here. She must be. Chloe! I'm starting to feel desperate when I hear no answer at all. Please, Chloe! Suddenly, snow starts to hit me in the face. Wind rages, but my entire vision is almost all white. Close mind is a mess. In the cold and biting snowstorm, I can suddenly hear something. Is that... crying? I breathe in again. Chloe! Chloe, I'm here to help you! It's going to be okay! Again, even though the storm is raging, I can hear something. How do you know? I can feel close desperation, but I know I can do it. I feel like I know her a little after seeing her memories. I feel like I can save her. 
I reach for my dream catcher and use all of my concentration to think about her. About how I want to help her. When I see clearly again, I look at my surroundings. It's a hospital room, but since everything is clear, I know this is not a memory. And in the bed, I find a sleeping Chloe. So this is where you are. She looks like she's sleeping, but I know she won't wake up if I shake her. She's lost inside herself. Guess I'll just have to save her. Again, I grip onto my dream catcher, and this time I will it to find Chloe's mind. I follow the sound of crying that I feel more than here. And I find her. Alone, crying in a hospital gown, but still alive. And that makes a smile appear from on my face for a little while. She doesn't see me at first, but I give her my answer either way. Because you have so much to live for. So many people to live for. What? I reach for her, knowing I can only give her the help to return. She needs to find the will to herself. That's my answer. I cannot make you want to live, but I can help you back. So... I can see everyone again? Her crushed voice is almost too much to bear, but I keep reaching out for her. Yes, they're waiting for you. You need to talk to Matthew again, right? To tell him that you want to spend more time with him? You have to meet with your friends, go to your favorite cafe and eat too much food while talking about everything and nothing. You need to write a book. You have to share your thoughts and stories with the world. It's not your time yet. I know. I'm sorry, but even if I go back, even if I wake up, I'll still be sad. I'll still feel like I'm the worst. I want to dis I'll still want to disappear and not return. Talk to someone. What? Tell someone about this. Make them realize that you need help. They will no doubt help you. You have to be strong, Chloe. Yes. Yes, I know. And as I grab her hand and drag her on her feet, I can feel her mind disappearing from here, going where that her body is. I can feel her wake up, I can feel the ones waiting for her weep in relief. And when I return to the forest, I feel warmth on my skin, I can hear life and happiness. I know that things won't be better for her at first, but I'm confident that she'll make it. She'll be strong this time. I should go. I'm back. DC Zero Zero Eighty Six. Boss! I retreat a little when I hear the happiness in my voice. I shake my head a little. I did it! I saved Chloe! You did. I... I did good, didn't I? I warned you it was no child's play. It was hard, was it not, DC Zero Zero Eighty Six? It was, but I'm glad I could ha help her. She'll be okay. With time. Silence ensues when I stop talking, and nothing really happens for what feels like a long time. But then I gather all my courage. Can I... Can I help another? You can. But be careful with this one. It's very special. Yes, I will, thank you! I smile brightly at Boss, even though I don't know where he is. And before he fades out, I hear his voice, lower than normal. You did a good job. I take a little time trying to process that before focusing again. The boss feels more real than usual when I see the dream that's left for me. Like he's not just a voice, but a being. I shake my head before getting back to business. For some reason I feel afraid to reach for the dream. It almost burns with intensity. I don't hesitate for long though. I don't want, uh, as I don't want boss to doubt me. I can do this. I am nothing but a breeze wanting entrance. I am nothing that will fuel your despair. I only wish peace and calm. And that is why I find myself in the dream that is yours. I beg you, humbly, grant me entrance. They took her beautiful clothes away from her, dressed her in an old grey smock, and gave her wooden shoes. I guess she really was alone. Dinner's ready. I understand. What are you doing? Quit reading in old storybooks and try to do something productive for once. I cannot believe you are so useless. I I'm so... That room again. I wonder what it means.
place seems very eerie. For some reason, I really don't like it here. No. Focus, you're on a job. If you try very hard, you can save someone. But just try having a look around. I close my eyes, moving my energy around the location to find something of note, but nothing. This is weird. I cannot feel anyone's presence at all. I guess I'll have to look around with my own eyes. The house seems pretty grand, uh, and every flat s seems to be pretty grand, and every flat surface is adorned by some fancy decoration. I feel a little uncomfortable in here for some reason, like I'm not allowed to be. Which is stupid, since this is just someone's dream. To be honest, this house seems... lonely. Oh my god, stop. It, it seems lonely. It seems very lonely for some reason. I don't know, there's just something about it. Or the gut feeling, I guess. I try to straighten myself as I look for the memories. I think I look braver than I feel. Here goes. We're at the next point and click session. I'm just gonna click the ones in the order I like. I touch the memory. I often watch the clock in my living room. Not actually often, rather, I watch it whenever I sneak into the living room when everyone is away. It ticks. It ticks in this calming way that reminds you gently that time is passing. It's gentle, soft, beautiful even. But I don't like it. For every tick, time is rotting away. I am rotting away. For every second is painful, and the longer the clock ticks, the longer the pain lasts. I hate it. I hate this clock, and yet, I can't stop looking. This really makes me feel ill. I don't know if I can take more. Keep going. I touch the memory. Sometimes, when everyone is away, I watch the big painting in the living room. Sometimes I imagine long nails scratching against the paint, because that is what she would do. Mom painted this, at the hospital. Dad put it up, and even though he doesn't love her anymore, he still has it up. She, she hates that. If she could tear down this painting, it would already be gone by now. Now the reason why I love this painting so much. This really makes me feel ill. I should keep going. I touch the memory. A girl is lying on the sofa. I can barely see her face. There's a bruise near her eye. It hurts. I step back, suddenly afraid. Um, when a tall woman walks into the room looking down at the girl with disgust in her sharp features. What are you lying there for? I got hit by a snowball. The little girl sniffs and I can feel a pang of pity. Well, if you're gonna lie there and feel sorry for yourself, you should go to your room. The sharpness of the woman's voice makes me flinch, but the girl's expression does not change, except the sorrowful look and the barely visible eyes. Yes. I apologize. <sighs> woman leaves with fast steps. I'll go to my room then. Again. This kinda hurts. I don't know if I can keep going, but you should keep going. I touched a memory. Everyone left for the day, and they forgot this teapot with the cups. It's still warm. I f it feels calming to wrap your fingers around the cup and watch the steam slowly rise in the air. But I cannot drink it. She will know if I did. I don't even want to think about what happens then. This really makes me feel ill. I don't know if I can take more. You should keep going. Amory has such calm eyes. She always watches me and rarely lets me touch her with her eyes. Her eyes tells me that she doesn't ha hate me. She doesn't judge me. She doesn't mind me. And I am not afraid of her. She will never tell me that I'm in the way. This is awful. I can barely breathe through the thickness of the air. 
I need to get out of here, to find just one happy memory. With hasty steps, I leave the living room. The quietness of the next room is the first thing that hits me. This is different. I don't know what to think. Closing my eyes, I try to find more memories, but only one is here. The picture on the wall makes me feel something I can't quite explain. I'm not even thinking anymore as I reach for it. I need to find something happy. Just a glimpse of joy. I can't take all of this darkness. Just something. Please. I breathe the air in, my lungs filled with salty, salty air, and my shoulders relax without me telling them to. My body gives in to the cold, harsh air that doesn't blow me away. I breathe in and out for a long time. I panic and fear calm. I almost smile. The ocean is beautiful and calm. It was all I needed right now. I barely notice it as the dreamer's thoughts merge with my own. I love the ocean. It's the only place where I can breathe freely, laugh openly. It is not a cage. I came here often when I was very little. My mom, my dad, and me. I would just bathe in the water until sunset, and my mom and dad would be laughing as the wave crashed over me, and I just kept going. Sorry, I'm pouring myself a cup of tea. Determined not to stop for anything. It was a beautiful time. I still feel it when I smell the salt in the air and the small droplets of crushing waves hit my face. I am home. I am at peace. I am... I am lying. I'm alone in my room. I am alone. It's all in my head. None of it was real. All of this happiness is not real. I hate it. I hate it all. No matter what I do, I'm in the way. I'm useless. I'm crazy, aren't I? She always says so, that I'm a freak, that I'm in the way. I... I... No, stop! This is too much, please! I guess I am. My breathing is caught in my throat as I try to vomit all of the feelings that filled me up from within. <clears throat> but nothing comes out and the terror is left in me, ripping and turning. I can't breathe. I need to get out of this room. This is a little better, I think. Maybe that before was just... I can't hide in other worlds anymore. It was all I had, but I can't. It's in my head. None of this is real. I don't even blink before turning around and running out of the room. What is this? This place is... You better not look sad. If you look sad, the outsiders will ask what is wrong. And they mustn't know. They're always watching. She is always watching. No matter where I run to, it has no end. I always lose. No matter what happens, no matter where I hide, I cannot find happiness. And if I do, it's all in my head. I run. I run, and I don't know where my legs will take me, but I run. I run because this is a nightmare there is no waking from. It's a nightmare because it is real. It is a nightmare because it is... This is her room. I bend over the bed, clutching onto the sheets and wheeze and cough, but the feelings of and fear can't get out that way. Anyway. <sighs> After breathing deeply for a couple of minutes, I finally look through the room. There's only one memory. I'm scared. I don't know what will happen. But I promised I'd help. With a deep breath, I reach for the memory. The girl is sitting on the bed, pressing her phone against her ear. Her hair is wild and frithy, dried tears on her cheeks. She looks broken. Please. Mom? Rhea? M Mom! The tears that had stopped a little while ago begins to slide down the girl's cheeks again. 
She's clinging on to the phone like it's her only chance at life. Mom, how are you? Are you okay? No. The girl closes her eyes, tears dripping from her chin as she takes a staggering breath, composing herself. How are you? Again she breathes and then plasters a smiling mask on her face, eyes still shining with tears. I'm fine. Things are fine here. That's good. I love you, sweetie. I love you too. The girl, Rhea, puts the phone down and at some point the tears stop. She breathes slowly and then asks the empty room. Mom? I know you're not always so super strong and happy, but can I ask you one question? I know you become sad when I talk to you. That's what I've been told. I just want this one question. Would you be happier if I was gone? I can't take it. I can't take it because every feeling that girl is feeling is in me. I can feel it all. I know what she's going through and it hurts. It hurts because... Enough. I've had enough. Stop it. Just stop it. I've... I've been through this before. I don't want to see it again. Again, I feel like vomiting my guts up, but instead I look towards him, the so-called boss. I don't even flinch to see that he's more than just a voice now. I don't care. You! You dirty, filthy liar! You knew! I get so close to the weird form he has taken that I can almost feel his eyes upon me. You knew that I... My voice breaks. That I am Bria! That was something for you to figure out for yourself. You did well. Don't you? Why? Why would you do this? What happened to me? Why am I here? There's another memory for you to read. Can you at least tell me something about it? It was right before you ended up in this world, DT Sears. Do not call me that! Very well. I'm going, then. Do you think you can do it? I won't know unless I try! I leave without another word, throwing my dream catcher at his feet. I've never seen anything like her. I am truly sorry. Sheesh, what a day. Standing by the ocean, she, Rhea, looks tired and spent, but also less dark, almost hopeful. She looks stronger. Hello? Dad? What? A divorce? I I'm sorry, Dad. Yes. No, it's okay. I'll take the bus. Yeah, love you too. Bye. They got a divorce. They listen to me. It's it's over. I am I'm free. She looks more alive than ever as she stands by the ocean. Finally. Finally, she's free. But suddenly... No! I can't think. I reach for her, desperate to catch her. But I can't. I'm floating. Down and down and down towards the deep. I can't think. I can't breathe. I'm so tired. No. This can't be true. I was... I was finally free. I finally found it. I was happy at last. This can't be true. It's not fair. It's so, so unfair. I can't go out like this. There's so much I have to do. Why? Why does it always end up like this? No matter where I go or what I do, I always end up in the dark again. Alone. Why? I died. I died even though I finally found freedom. I had a chance at life. And I died. The world cannot be this unfair. Tell me this isn't true. I don't want to be dead. I hated it too at first. 
But I learned to accept it in a way. I learned to love the life I had, even though happiness wasn't always visible. But how? How can I go on? I'm... I feel so lost. You'll find your way. I know for a fact that you always do. I don't want to be dead. Me neither. But try believing that this is not the end. Will you come with me? Or are you going to stay here? Come with you? I'm gonna go with her. But what does that even mean? Going with her and then what? I didn't know, and it scared me. It's okay to be afraid. But I'd already made up my mind. She knows that too. You sound way too smart to be me. Rhea chuckles and shakes her head a little before reaching out to me, breaking whatever barrier kept her from me until now. Shall we? Yeah. I grab onto her high hand, holding tightly. It's not like I'm afraid she'll disappear, but that's exactly it, actually. We begin walking, and for each step, I feel more light. More myself. I don't look at myself, but I know I'm turning into who I was again. That's too bad. I like the purple hair. I chuckle to myself, knowing that Rhea is gone. Well, not gone. She's where she's supposed to be. I start to feel lighter, as if I'm floating. I guess this is it. I look back and see nothing, but that doesn't stop me from worrying farewell to everything I've left behind. A silent goodbye. See you on the other side. Ending 4. Rhea was caught. Which is the true ending of the game. So yes, I just want to give a really quick thanks, uh, thanks to Holy Cheese and Kani Nani and DS Sans for helping me doing the art style for this game. Most of the art style at least are like logo. And thanks to Steam Power Chiva for the ending song. <laughs> And to the artists who wanted to work free of charge with me, your patience, kindness, and talent was too good for me, and I am so grateful. To the friends who gave me advice and moral support when I was at wit's end, you know who you are. And to you for downloading and playing You Rock. Thank you. And this game is dedicated for the people who are told and tell themselves that they are wired wrong. Being different is not a bad thing. She has gone. I do ponder. What did she change? The silhouette of the not world does not get more time to think, because another presence makes itself known. Where am I? What is this place? Who are you? If the silhouette is startled by the knowledge that it still has a physical form, it does not show it. Welcome, DC0087. And ladies and gentlemen, that was the true end of a uh, dream catcher. Um, though I guess it's not it's like it's if it if the game had to have a true end, then that would be it. But yeah, what do you think? Um, I it's. Well, it's not my first game at all. I've been working a lot of other ga lots of different games, but um, it's the first game that I am really, really, really like proud of because um, there's good things in all of the games I made. The first game choice that I released is the first game I released, so it has a special place in my heart, even though there are a lot of problems with it. And um, the second game, 19 Hours, I'm proud of that because even though it's very symbolic and most of the uh, <laughs> most of the things are very hard to understand um, because it's short and made in 19 hours but I'm proud of what I could do with such a short amount of time and this game I'm proud because I first of all it looks fantastic I feel um, because of the art that some people were I'm so grateful for them helping me like 
you really need to check them out because all of the artists that I worked with um, has, are so uh, were so like kind. And when I told uh, there was something that they can change or something, they just went, "Okay, I'm doing that. I'll do that then." And they're like pretty fast. Like a couple of them had computer problems, and uh, but they still stuck with it and did their best. And I am so grateful. Uh, the artist I worked the most with, Holy Cheese. Thank you. I love your art style. I'm so happy to have it in my game. I'm so glad that you helped me uh, make Catch the way I envisioned her, and uh, also like put your own art style on it. So, uh, oh, it was it was amazing. I I love that. <laughs> um, thank you. And thanks to the 80 people who downloaded the game already. I am very grateful, and um, I'd love to get feedback, even if it's criticism about the things I could do better, I'd love to hear it. Um, I'd love to hear what you think, uh, you guys think. I um, I hope you liked uh, this, <laughs> um, and if you want to see the other three endings, I will um, link the game in the description, together with my other games. and. Um, also gonna link the artists who worked for me um, and I hope you have a nice day uh, this is Nana um, and uh, this is my game dream catcher <laughs> and I will see you guys in whatever I make it's probably gonna be another anycon video tomorrow so look forward to that goodbye